So section 4.2 is adding and subtracting rational expressions, so a ratio of polynomials, and simplifying complex rational expressions. So adding and subtracting rational expressions, remember that you need to have a common denominator. So if you don't already have one, you have to create it. So this is kind of the opposite process we were doing in the factoring where we were looking for the greatest common factor. Now we're looking for the least common multiple. So we want to find out what they have in common already. And then what is the smallest thing that both of these will divide into? So how I imagine this is if I have x to the fifth and x cubed, if I want to know the greatest common factor, it's actually smaller than of those guys, or at most one of them. Then if you want to know the least common multiple, it's the biggest guy because it's what will they both divide evenly into. So greatest common factor is what will divide evenly into both and it's smaller than or equal to the two guys. So let's have numbers like 8 and 12. And the least is going to be 24 because that's the smallest number that they both divide into evenly. But then if I ask you what's the biggest number that divides into both of them evenly, that's the greatest common factor. And that's 4. So we're looking for the least common multiple or the lowest common multiple. So we need to have at least four. It needs to be at least as big as one of the denominators. So four y, the two will go into that, but then we're missing an x. So we need a common denominator of four x y. So I want you to show your process of finding a common denominator really clearly. So the first fraction needs another factor of a 2 and a factor of a y in order to have 4xy as the denominator. Well, you can't just multiply the denominator. You need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. I, no matter what y is, that's 1. So it's legal to multiply by 1 because that doesn't change anything. So then we have plus, and we have the x over 4y. But our denominator here is missing a factor of an x. So we need to multiply by x over x. Again, that's 1. So it's legal to multiply by 1 because nothing changes. And then we're going to multiply numerators. 4y over 4xy. And you multiply denominators. Multiply numerators and multiply denominators. And now they're is a common denominator. So we get x squared plus 4y divided by 4xy. And this is the sum of those two rational expressions. OK, now the next one, you very first need to factor this trinomial and see if you can factor it into two binomials. So we'll have an x and an x. And 2 and 1 are your only choices since 2 is prime. And to get the negative 3 in the middle, you're going to need to have minus and minus. So now we can see that the second term needs a factor of an x minus 1 in the denominator in order to have common denominators. And we can only multiply the denominator by x minus 1 if we also multiply the numerator by x minus 1. So now we're going to have 4 over x minus 2 times x minus 1 minus 2 times x minus 1 over x minus 2 x minus 1. So now that you have a common denominator, you can combine the numerators over that one common denominator. Don't cancel the x minus 1s because of this minus. You need to simplify the numerator and then see if there's any canceling that can happen. So you're going to have 4 minus 2x plus 2 over x minus 2x minus 1 
So that's 6 minus 2x over x minus 2x. And if you wanted to make it look more beautiful, you could factor out a 2 from the numerator, and you should do that just to make sure there isn't a matching factor in the top and the bottom. So Newton should accept either of these two answers. Okay, they, the denominators have nothing in common. So the first fraction needs to be multiplied by y plus 1 over y plus 1. And the second fraction needs to be multiplied by x minus 2 over x minus 2. Okay, so then I'm going to have 8 